is it possible to, through meditation, through dreaming, through visionary experiences, actually experience the post-death bardo or the luminous bardo? Are these things you can experience in this life? Uh, yes, of course. When you are reaching enlightenment or reaching high level meditators, they can, through the meditation, there's no distance. You see, what I'm saying is, uh, through the meditation, you can just uh, can go there. You can do yeah. things. Mm. So I have many uh, true stories of that, too. Welcome back to the transmission, my fellow sentient sacks of stardust. And speaking of being a sentient sack of stardust, as I'm sure I have mused about many a time in the mind meld at this point, there is no user manual for this tragic, beautiful, odd circumstance we call being a human being. We're all just thrust into a meat sack and blindly wielding the most advanced technology known to the cosmos, human consciousness. Or maybe it's wielding us. Uh, I certainly cannot be sure. But to that point, over the years, I've looked to numerous wisdom traditions to try to make a little more sense of it, to try to wield it a little more skillfully, because let me tell you, I've certainly become an adept at wielding it unskillfully. And for me, one of the main sources of that kind of wisdom has absolutely been Buddhism and meditation. And in more recent years, I've developed a at least passing interest in Tibetan Buddhism, this colorful, esoteric, really pretty psychedelic, visionary, initiatory tradition that's been unbroken for centuries. I will admit it is something of a labyrinth of a rabbit hole trying to make sense of Tibetan Buddhism, but if you do even enter that labyrinth, one of the first things you'll probably come across is what's popularly become known as the Tibetan Book of the Dead, or more properly, the Bardo Thodol. This enigmatic text that purports to describe the death and rebirth process that's meant to give the dying a way to navigate what they call the intermediate state or the bardo between dying and your next rebirth. I will admit, much like Tibetan Buddhism at large, from an uninitiated Western vantage point, it's pretty esoteric stuff. It's pretty hard to penetrate. So when I heard about this new book, The Tibetan Book of the Dead for Beginners, I was really excited, uh, particularly because it's actually co-authored by both a Tibetan Lama and a Western Buddhist practitioner, Lama Lanang Rinpoche and Morty Levine. I immediately knew I needed to have this mind meld because it is just such a rich, fascinating, wonder-tickling topic, even if we can only scratch the veneer of it. And one of the things I think is going to surprise you in this mind meld may even elicit a bit of a minor epiphany is how closely related some of these Buddhist mainstay concepts actually are, even though they seem pretty disparate. Things like loving kindness, karma, compassion, dreams, death, rebirth, they're all actually pretty intimately interwoven. But anyway, we'll leave that for the mind meld proper. All of the links you're going to need for Lama Lanang Rinpoche, Morty Levine, and their new book are in the description. Um, and I do want to make a point of saying here that I'm very grateful to get some time with a true Tibetan-born Rinpoche like Lama Lanang. It's such a rare opportunity. This man's mind is just such a library of practice and wisdom. Obviously, English is not his first language, so you may need to focus in to really get what he's saying, but I think you'll find that it's infinitely worth it. Of course, all the necessary keyboard mudras that you will need for third eye drops are in the description as well. On that note, you will see that we have over 300 audio-only podcasts that you will never find here on YouTube, so do look up third eye drops wherever you listen to pods. Apple Pods, Spotify, wherever. Click that subscribe button, my friends. And on that note, it is also of the utmost importance that you click that like and subscribe button here on YouTube. That algorithm must be tickled. And if you want to initiate yourself yet a layer deeper 
that is join in on calls with myself and guests you've heard on the show, meet over 150 plus other Wonder Dippers, enter the Wonder Lodge at patreon.com forward slash third eye drops. It's not only the best way to support the show, you get everything I just mentioned, plus rewards like stickers, pins, shirts, and more. Check out all the details at patreon.com forward slash third eye drops. And with that, my friends, let's initiate this mind meld with Lama Lanang Rinpoche and Morty Levine. I think a good way to start this conversation is just the reason I think these ancient wisdom traditions are just so valuable is because in in our culture, I feel like we're just so bereft of ways to make sense of the phenomenology of being a human being. You know, it's like we, we have all of this knowledge when it comes to to science and measurement in the material world and so little intelligence when it comes to using our own consciousness. And that's why I have gone down this path personally. Like I've you've taken classes on Buddhism, started meditating. I, I have read the, the Book of the Dead all because of looking for some hope of, of figuring out how to use this consciousness that we've all been sort of thrust into. Um, so to start with, you know, you you often hear anybody who goes down this this Buddhist wisdom rabbit hole, really, of any permutation of Buddhism, one of the ideas you'll come across very early on is that the self is kind of an illusion, that this this what we conceive of as the self is really kind of an illusion. What does that mean? What does it mean that the self is an illusion? Or is that an accurate statement to say about Buddhism? I leave, I leave all the hard questions for Lama. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Uh, so there's so many ways uh, we can talk about, but I think as uh, in general speaking, an ordinary mind is uh, <clears throat> everything's relative. So uh, which way you want to, it's you are the really uh, driver. And uh, also, the truth is what you're thinking in this moment. That is you, you mm. see. Uh, but uh, when we are in the relative path to reach the ultimate path, so that means uh, uh, it's kind of, we can't say just right away, say, oh, everything's an uh, illusion, what you see, what you hear. Uh, but that's what we can say is uh, what you see, what you hear, uh, and everything is uh, the reflections of the, our mind. Hmm. The truth is uh, our mind how to recognize, and that is you, that's your liver. So you don't need to worry about, oh, this person think that way. Hmm. Oh, okay, this book says this way. Oh, this the master says that. You don't need the worry because what you think that is a you, you and a what suit. From there, what we looking for and what wish we're wishing for, everything is a, it's a not something is a past, not something is a future, is a person. You can what you looking for, you can start because the choice is within 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 your mind or some people say your heart so uh but in the teachings of the buddha uh, what to say is uh, everything uh, it's you even including yourself is illusion that's why we're suffering because you see oh it's me this is mine this mm -hmm. my family this mine my mind but actually the truth is nothing belong to you. It is like, it's like a, what, the television, you know, when you're watching movies, it's not, not really different than your life in television or your last night's dream and your life. And when you're dreaming time, you never think it's a dream. When mm -hmm. you wake up, oh, it was a dream, but uh, you can see it. But also, it's the same way as like that. That's why it is illusion. Something's not real. We think as a real, uh, use too much uh, ignorance in judging, 
and grasping that's the why we are suffering. But mm -hmm. when we recognize and uh, relatively we have to start this to understand this, we have to meditate in impermanence. So begins to, oh, nothing is forever. Everything is impermanent. Wow. Sort of then, from then you can start, oh, who is really me? Now saying delusion, but what it is? It's my hair, forehead, bones, flesh, meat. What it is me? Since my lifetimes, in this lifetime, I know how to say mother, father, and I instantly, like I constantly, I have this me, 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 and I want to be my way, me, my family, me, me, me. And uh, now you realize, kind of, oh, really, you can't found the yeah. real me. Only relatively is uh, the me is uh, the what you think that is you, you know, because you think of something good, that moment is your good. But the, the moment maybe you are sad or you are mad, <laughs> that is right. you, the momentarily. So that's why uh, in the Buddhist say uh, we are only the changes within in you know, within within in our mind. So it's kind uh, the mind is a driver of happiness, sadness, a driver of uh, what you see, what you hear, in which way you want. That's the way everything follows because of the how you project and how you grasp. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This idea, this core idea of, of relativity seems to be so important and so core. And I think a lot of people under, can understand that, right? That, that really at bottom, we're just having this experience and it's constantly being colored by our nervous system, wh what our mind is doing, what mood we're in, how full we are, you know, whatever mundane circumstances are always contributing to the quality of what that experience is. But practically, it seems like we're always coerced into this sort of egoic way of being, at least in, in Western culture. And I often wonder if the way we live here is just almost incompatible with 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 living a life that's more attuned to, to, to you know, that sort of, for lack of a better term, kind of like meta mindset where, where you are focused on compassion. You are focused on not the self, not the ego. And I mean, in the book, of course, you you talk about karma and grasping and the relationships between karma and grasping and how that eventually feeds into the quality of your consciousness and all the way through life and death. And and I wonder, how do we care about things without grasping? Is that even possible? You know, how like you, you both have this great book out, you both have relationships, you know, same here, minus a book. <laughs> um, how, how do we care about those things without grasping? Uh, you know, we need to use uh, a wisdom and we need to use a joy. Hmm. You see, you can uh, create things. You can want to do some things. Uh, and then also we have eyes to look and you really wanted to do it, ear to listen, mind to feel. You have to be first, uh, not just like maybe or trying or... I don't know. This is not good. You have to be clear hmm. as a crystal. Then you joy, not use the grasping. If it's something work, it, of course, success. If it doesn't work, you did your best. You learn a lot. You see, mm -hmm. it's live like you and Mori and we all same path. Just try to do good things to ourselves and others, you see. And that's the reason karmically we are in this moment together. So, and that's why it's like a sort of how you use your mind. Do you see, uh, oh, you know, the balance. The Our mind is 
we think is all because he or because she, because this, because it is this, this, this. We have stories. With our story is a very simple, but you have to be clear. As a Christo, you have to know what you really want. When first you have to start with the the clear vision, with the confidence, and then also you have to enjoy what you're doing. To also you want to this to, to oh this bring some um, income or happy to me, but also same time. Well, I'm doing this as something benefit for future young generations or, or future of this country or the world. Because you see, the sometimes we think as, or oh, I am not enough. I don't have money. I don't have time. I'm a little person. I can do nothing. That's wrong. You can do make a difference in the world. You see, uh, which way you want to uh, focus. You have a power to negative way or positive way or non-virtue or virtue, which way you want to focus. You have fully power. Buddha was just a prince, and he mm-hmm. focused to looking for answers, truth, and gave up kingdom, gave up uh, the harm, uh, uh, all the joyful things, the material world he gave up went to the deer forest and uh, then he meditated and uh, he, with his work, with his mind, he found the truth and he wake up and wake up from the ignorance, uh, attachment, pride, jealous, then become fully enlightened one Buddha. So Buddha saying is, it doesn't matter poor or rich, it doesn't matter man or woman, the matter is your motivation to found this is everybody has this opportunity, you see? Yeah. So in the negative ways, you can look at, and the Chinese, uh, uh, Mao Zedong, during his times, uh, 100 million people died and killed. Yeah. And uh, one poor boy's imagination and his focus. So the all what I'm saying is we all have this gift because Luca is like Mother Teresa, she was born in Bulgaria, grew up in Romania, and went to Mexico and to India, and went to win Nobel Peace Prize because she didn't talk about. She lived with loving kindness and yeah. compassion. If we meet her, she's kind of a busy lady, and she don't want to talk with us. <laughs> but and she because she don't have time, she just don't yeah. talk about. She do it. So it's a, we have to do it, anything we want, something like that. Yeah. I'm definitely curious on your perspective on this question too, Morty, because you, you come at it from the Western angle. You know, you, you come at the, it's the same problem from, from the Western angle as someone who, who, like me, grew up in the West in a, a certain wine, mindset, a certain way of thinking about the self. And then I assume, I, I don't know at what point in your life you came to these ideas, um, but then, um, of course, I'm sure that really shook your idea of identity and shook your idea of what self is. H- how did your understanding around that metamorphosize? Well, Michael, I don't have any problems. Just let me put that out there now that we're uh, talking to the public. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, you know, um, th- it's a very good point. I think the West is a very difficult place to live, given everything that Rinpoche has just described and you've just described because we're faced with so many things that want to strengthen our sense of self. And, uh, you know, in, in, in the book, we talk about working definition of the self or like Lama said, all the stories we tell ourselves, Oh, I'm a great husband. I'm a great father. I'm a great career, I'm a businessman. I'm a really great podcaster. These are all these. And the stronger we hold on to that sense of self, then the more we're going to get disappointed later when we find out that's just not always the case. It's not always true. So does the sense of self exist? Does the self exist? You know, in Buddhism, we say, well, it exists, but just not in the way you think it does. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, when we have this sense of permanence of who we are, we're very opinionated. We're very strong about, oh, that restaurant's horrible. They will never, or my wife is this. And that's where the problem lies when we are so grasping and clinging 
to who we think we are, the stories we tell ourselves, and how we think the world should be. And um, and the world is impermanent, so it's it's not going to be as strong as you know. It's not going to be. It's not going to match every moment. It's changing. It's not going to match what we think it should be. And and personally, you know, a lot of people come to Buddhism, you know, the hard way. We should say because they come because they're disappointed or they're uh, uh, they're not happy with their lives um, or their relationships or depressed or whatever it is. No one comes to Buddhism because they're just like totally per- everything's great. <laughs> everything's great. Right. You know, no one. I don't need any religion. Everything's great. So people typically come to a religion in general because they're they're seeking uh, to fix something, and uh, and that's really where Buddhism focuses on. And I, I came through it also the hard way, um, really through martial arts, hmm. which really kind of cleared my my mind and allowed me to see for a few moments. The kind of joy and happiness that's possible. And then, of course, you go back into your habits of who you think you are and the stories we tell ourselves, and then you, you feel yourself being weighed down again. So the beauty of Buddhism and, and what Brinford Chase teaching and what we have in the book here is we're trying to show people that through the different tools we offer of how to live your life, whether it's meditation or whether it's feeling and understanding impermanence and and, and weakening our sense of self, then we get to see and be more open-minded and being more open-minded to what's going on around us and who we think we are, then we can kind of feel a little bit of sense of joy and a little bit of lightness to our lives. Yeah. Yeah. Great context. Great context. Yeah. And, I want to ahead. share with you uh, one story, maybe short stories. There's many stories comes up, but uh, this Lama, and I know, and uh, he's Kambo uh, Munser Rinpoche, and uh, he went to uh, communist uh, jail uh, 20 some years. And wow. uh, so he was a very high Lama. They put in uh, dark rooms and uh, he can't go outside because uh, a regular uh, those uh, prisoners, they can go walk in the field and, you know, factories and went out. But he can go out just... Uh, Put him twenty some years. Wow! So then released, and then his students and his family they cry and say, you know, you must be very hard. We miss you. We, so we really, really long time no see. You know, they crying. He says that was the wonderful twenty years. <laughs> I really a blessing to don't need to think about nothing. I just only meditate and practice. Wow. That was a blessing. I cannot so, imagine. Yeah, in America, we always uh, complain something. I always say, okay, go to Africa or go to India, just spend there a few months. Uh, so you see, I, just, I see the difference uh, where, where I grow up. We don't have nothing, just uh, running water, no cars, no television. And we here, we have 21st century life. Everything we have, cars fly, so yeah. that kind of times. But its life is harder because of the our minds are so uh, uh, controlled by the material world and the technology. Yeah, yeah. I think about that often. I just I just did a podcast where we we're talking about what what is collectively become known as the meaning the meaning crisis, right? And it, it, it's kind of ironic because I think part of the main motivator of that meaning crisis is just piling on so many elements of life that are essentially like cultural and egotistical simulations and decorations and things that to us seem incredibly important to who we are, to our identity, to our livelihoods, whatever. But then you come to realize that it's those very things to an extent that are causing the problem. Like there are so many different aspects to being what we call us, quote unquote. And, and we think that we're doing those things for our well-being, perhaps, or, or to get ahead, perhaps. But really, it's like those are the very things that are kind of cannibalizing our own minds. And 
I often wonder about that balance between simplicity and modernity because I I personally would not want to go live a very austere uh, lifestyle like that. I don't I don't think I I could. I don't think I could be the guy in the in the dark room meditating for twenty years and be happy about it. I, th- there's part of me that wishes I could be, but you know, I, find, finding that balance, I think, is I, I don't know how we do that, but I, I guess I'll leave it leave it up to both of you to maybe uh, give some insight into that question. I will say is a practice, and that need is a patience. Uh, and uh, stop start chasing the all the things what he said, she said, books and things. It really begins to study what what really important for ourselves, and begin to work study with our own mind, study our own life, and then you really found what you're looking for is it's already there. So just need the uh, is t- need the time and the uh, when we're ready, that opportunity is already there. Yeah. You know, Michael, you, you paint a little bit of a grim picture. <laughs> Do I? Yes. Yeah. Yes. A little bit. I know, I know that picture well. Yeah. And, you know, a few things about it. One is, um, yeah, the odds are against us because we're just bombarded with our culture from the day we're born. And when you grow up like Rinpoche did, or that person he was talking about in the jail, they're not bombarded with that. If anything, them, you know what they're bombarded with? Compassion. The very Guru Rinpoche, who is the second Buddha, or who the first Buddha, or their teachings, even if they don't go to the monastery, they're still, they're out there with their prayer wheels, oh, mani padme, oh, mani padme, oh, mani padme. So, so that's where they start. And we're starting in a very different place. Now, having said that, where do you start now? Once right. you have this realization that, gee, this is not quite right, that I'm really so angry, anxi- anxious, upset, uh, tense, stressful, what do I do about it? Well, the, you know, Pema Chodron says, you know, just start where you are. Right. Just start now. Yes. And you don't have to sit there and meditate for six hours. You want to? Great. But maybe you start five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, you know, you work your way up. Just start where you are. It's the only thing you can do. Yeah. Yeah, for for me over the years to one of the things, and of course, I'm nowhere near achieving what I'm about to describe, but it's this slow process of changing the object of my desire in terms of what I think and feel like success is, you know, because we're so in the West, we're so programmed to envision a certain kind of success, a certain picture of the self. And that becomes so entrenched in the brain and the nervous system that you can't, you know, starting where you are means starting in this neurological meat sack that's been programmed to to not be that way in, in a sense. And there's a lot of undoing and and unlearning and patience with yourself in my experience that's needed because the, you know as as you both point out it's it's a it's not like you just flip a switch and you start meditating 6 hours a day it's like a very long process of of like wanting to slowly become that person and uh, you know and as the book kind of alludes to in many ways that that's probably a multi lifetime process maybe not just a a single lifetime process yeah um you know uh that's his kind of uh, lifestyle in America. Everybody is uh, chasing the dreams, themes. They think that success is a, a luxurious life, about cars and big houses and so on and so forth. But the truth is uh, you can just look at the, the owner of the Tesla or owner of the Facebook. Those kind of people is the richest person in the world. You can see they are relaxed and enjoyed, and they really think as oh, I'm blessed. No, they all want to buy more companies and more, which way more, more spending. So the truth is, the success is uh, when you have uh, happiness in your heart and peace in your home. You are a very successful man, 
and a very successful woman. You see, uh, it's uh, the simple way is uh, the best way. It's a lot of people don't understand. Simple me, me means uh, uh, the also Buddha's teachings is not just only six uh, six hours meditation or two hours meditation. It is a way of life. It is kind of a meditation state to work with your own mind to see yourself like you're driving uh, in a highway. When you experience the driver, you have to relax, enjoy the view. Uh, you don't need to worry because you know what you're doing. It's the kind of same way. It's like when you meditate away, we have life, you are focused, kind of work that direction. Then everything follows. Like even though somebody's yelling you, it's about, oh, wow, now I can have to deal. But it's, you know, it's your mind is nobody can tell you can tell. Then you have chance to also this is some person yelling. You listen, so, oh wow, I talk in the truth. Really I did then so you learn it yourself and and say thank you. I'm so sorry I did that. You can do that. You see, when you you're driving yourself, your mind. Then also sometimes this the person may be exaggerating and say things, maybe not true. Then you know, oh, this is not true. That is not my problem. You know, you don't need to take it in. So it's kind of, then also you sometimes people yelling and crying means also they're suffering. If you need, you just forget into this person yelling you. you like, oh, what I can do, make, help her or him. Mm-hmm. It's my turns to work more compassion. Yes. But the what are we do in this world? Everybody's like, okay, we have to revenge. You say this to me, I was going to say worst. I'm yeah. going to, you hurt me, I'm going to hurt you more stronger. You're my enemy. Then actually when we anger, somebody is angry, you're not hurting your enemy, hurting yourself and hurting your family, loved ones. And around who's close to your home, you hurting them because you angry. Then they feel it's anger. So, and that's why when the, you in the study with the mind, then then what you are looking for is you found it's there, without a story or without excuse, anywhere in the jail or anywhere in the most difficult place, you can have peace. Hmm. And turn college. Yes, I believe it's possible. I don't know if it's possible for me, but I believe that it's it's definitely possible. I um, for, for you for sure. <laughs> I can see it. You are you. looking for, and that then you found the door. Then you are already in. The end. Then you like, oh, wow. In the past, I'm just reading so many books and running so many rounds, but. All the answers to their found, and then you just sort of everything is become blessing. Yeah, I want to I want to return to this idea of of the self and what's experiencing what seems to be reality, and um, from from a couple of different angles. One angle is when I was in college, I took a Buddhist philosophy class, and I remember being introduced to just some of the you know the core the core ideas of Buddhism and. One of them that always really confused me was on Atman, on Anatta, like the fact that like a the core Buddhist notion that there actually is no soul. There is no unchanging essence of self. And the, the thing the thing I had trouble connecting the dots on is how can that be true while at the same time there is this multi lifetime process unfolding there is reincarnation there is some kind of maybe not continuity of experience but something that continues and something that goes on and i'm very happy to say that i think your book this book that you just put out probably has the most straightforward explanation (laughs) of of what that is that i've ever heard so would you mind um either of you or both of you 
um, elaborating on that, this, this, first of all, what's meant by this on Atman idea and how, what the Buddhist take is on it, that they're, I'll, I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you explain. So you see, that's as uh, in Buddha said, Yopa mind Jarvin the Marzik. You see, it's not really exist the sub nature because uh, I search, but I can't find. Mepa hmm. mind Kondi Kinjis. I can't say not exist because hmm. this is uh, the ground ground of the samsara and the nirvana you see mm. you have to <laughs> listen carefully it's kind of very hard to understand yeah but this asab is uh, the really goes with our mind the mind goes with the karma the karma kind of good karma turns good kind of ways bad karma turns bad ways so it is uh, something manifested is in the ground of our own mind. That's why in a Buddhist, we debate like this. We mm. really don't sort of central point of the sub exist or not exist. Or not exist. That's just, uh, the we talk about. But, uh, it is uh, really the debate level is to say, okay, okay, Lama Lanang. It's just the sound. You can give this name to anybody. It's okay. And you can name this to tree or pets or, or other person. Yeah. So you see the names is you can give it any everywhere. It's just sort of. Then a body. It's a body is like everybody has a human body. So then you look in, into the layers of the layers. You can't really find the Lama Lanang. But the, that energy, we talk about this combination of sub is the, our, in Tibetan Buddhist, we call it consciousness, subconsciousness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The subconsciousness, and, and then we have the called La. That is the, I think, is the spirit. In the Western, people say in the spirit. And these combines, then all these combination of the essence of the elements, all the elements, the five elements, they can buy, it's called, uh, we have this called tok, means that the life force. We're breathing, but the one day we stop the breathing, then we lose the body, it turns to the just dirt, you see. They're holding together, it's, that is kind of called the sub. Then also sub, in the Western people say, oh, you okay, can the brain, you know, your mind is yeah, in the brain. Right, right. And the most lot of Asian people say your mind is in your heart. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But uh, the, the mind is just an energy of light. You see, even though scientific world, they can found this, these answers. It's the same as the Buddha was says, they, they're guessing like the same way. So now you see, this energy is kind of connected with the, the nerves and the channels and chakras. Mm. So more are stronger like places, the brain and the heart, throat and, and navel chakra and those chakras in the south. Uh, and then also when we see something, it's there, south is there, recognize, oh, this is yellow, this is white, oh, this is good one, this is bad one. Right away, we recognize uh, there. Then we feel something right away, like, okay. Then it's just the energy there. So, oh, I, I just feel soft, feel rough, feel so and so. Then also you hear something like, oh, that's I don't want to hear. That's the noise. Also, you hear some, oh, I really wanted to hear this so, so nice. So all these uh uh, what is the, the that is the subconsciousness? The uh, the subconsciousness can connect with the consciousness of the sight, consciousness of the hearing, consciousness of the test, consciousness of the feelings. So in that way, you see there's uh, energetically, but this uh, sub energy in general, normal place is uh, driven by the karma. 
So the karma, the seeds of the karma is called five poisons, or mm -hmm. I can say it's three poisons. Sort of the ignorance, sort of the the cloud sky is a beautiful cloud. There's beautiful blue sky, but there's cloud that the, then you only you see is dark clouds, but you don't see the clouds. You see the in the what does the ignorance kind of don't see the clear consciousness. Yeah. So then we like uh, what our life is why we scared, why we suffer, why we afraid because. If you close your eyes and then you have to walk, you have to do things, but you have to, you don't see, you see. That's why we make mistakes. We make a wrong choice, wrong decisions. All this in cruise. Then also we get sort of attached to something. Oh, this is my family. I love this person. Like become attachment with the ignorance, a grasping. And then also we got uh, jealousy, hatred. They become built into sort of sub energy is uh, become the karmically, you create this. Then we think as, oh, why I'm suffering? Because because we live, we are, we are to our trans that energy to that way. So what I'm saying is, which way you want the energy is nobody can do it. Even though Buddha comes, say, oh, I'm a Buddha, I will go to liberate you. Then you feel, say, oh, this stranger person, maybe, I don't know, he's going to make tricks. He wanted to maybe control me. You see, you're scared. Mm -hmm. So, but if you really start with the, through meditation and study, then you can really understand. Also, you have to, through a lot of this different levels of meditation, First, they have to train into how to sit in the, your mind. So, because our mind is just like a wild monkey, you know, he can't just focus. <laughs> yeah. He have to run around. So, have to train into focus. Then also certain levels to great masters, they can give you steps by steps. Okay, this week you have to meditate this. This week you have to meditate in this. So it's like a guide to through through all the obstacles, through the all the difficulties. So so that then you can really found all the answers through your your mind or brain or whenever you say. It. So something uh, like that. But uh, that's just uh, also I can't really explain the, because the, the the really the sub enlightened energy is uh, something beyond the words. It's mm. not, you can't just describe, only you can reach through the, your uh, devotion and dedication and the joy for effort. Mm. So anyway, Mori wants to say something. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. After that, I'm not, I don't have much to say. Uh, you know, it, it, I think it comes back to, you know, the self, right? You mentioned self. What is the self? You know, the Buddha himself, he didn't really, that's a joke. Uh, the Buddha himself didn't really answer that question. You know, he was focused on karma. And he was basically saying, look, and the stories we, we tell ourselves and all the chatter we have going on and whether or not that selfish chatter that's going on most of the time or selfless. And basically, if we can, uh, you know, slow down and meditate, things like that, then that sense of self starts to weaken and soften and fade. And it's not there as much. And if we don't meditate or we keep going down the path that we are going in Western civilization, then what happens is our tendencies and our habits and our selfishness, me, 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 my, 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 I, it's a, that gets stronger, that's synonymous with developing negative karma. So the more selfless you are, if you look at your motivation, which is the basis for karma, if your motivation is selfish, you know, you mentioned earlier, well, how do I know, Michael, you mentioned, how do I know whether, you know, if I love someone or I, whether it's, you know, my, I, my, uh, you know, should I step back or, or, or should I go forward? There's a balance there. And you can just look at your motivation. If your motivation for loving someone is, oh, uh, they're going to take care of me, make me feel better or help me or support me, 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 then that's 
clearly a selfish motivation, or if it's more like, oh, how can I help and support someone else? And that's a selfless motivation. And that's what determines whether it's good karma, bad karma. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, what I'm saying is that the real your sub is uh, in this moment, what you're thinking, that is, uh, it's you. Mm. So that is uh, the reflections kind of pierce into your mind. The mind self is like a mirror. The mirror which way turns, that picture pierce, you know? Yeah. It's through the eye or through the ear or through the your mouth senses. But that is the picture you're creating and that the yourself you see. So in that is also this negative than you. As a positive, it's you. So you don't need to say, oh, I'm positive, so-and-so, no. You don't need to say, I'm a negative, so-and-so, no. It's all need this work and study and through meditation. So in that's the kind of the best way kind of working with the sub nature. Yeah. So sub nature is, uh, in I say, Buddha said it's there's no existence, even though wisdom eyes can see. It's not, a, you can't say it like, oh, nothing, because uh, this is the ground of our lives. So, but this is also which way you want. Then you say, oh, I want happiness. And just, you know, idea that you say, I want happiness. And the happiness is all already there, but we never satisfied. You see, mm -hmm. that's why we realize, oh, happiness. Be happy. You see, very simple. Oh, I want a peace, be peace. Okay, then be peaceful. It's just, uh, oh, I can peace because her or him or this. You can't just say that because you see, that's them. It your sub is you what you, what you are and what you're doing, and that's the sub. Yeah, yeah. That that posture of always looking outside the self uh -huh. and always grasping for something outside the self, I think, is another thing that's. Uh, I can only speak from the Western perspective, but it seems to just be endemic to the way that we operate and think about the world and finding a way to bring that back in, finding a way to investigate the mind and look at the mind more closely, I think is just indispensably important for, for beginning to break that spell and beginning to understand a little bit more about the nature of the mind. And now, now that we're on this track of like, what is the self? We're talking about karma. We're talking about the things that may move forward after this experience of me being Michael and you being you, respectively, it, it gets a little more directly into <clears throat> the topic of your new book. And I think this is just a topic people are immensely interested in, this this, this idea of, of Bardo's and, of course, what happens after we die. And, and one of the things that I kind of dawned on me while I was reading this book is the notion, I don't know if you say it this directly, but the notion that we're actually in, we're always in a Bardo. We're always in some kind of transitory plane uh, of existence, and we're not. We're, we're we we think like no, this is real life, and then we die and we go into this intermediate in between phase, and that's the bardo. And then to the Western mind, I think most people are like, "Whoo, I get to reincarnate." But to the Eastern mind, it seems like no, 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 that's not the idea at all, and that's you shouldn't find that as a relief to begin with. So that this idea that we're I guess what I'm getting at is this idea that from the Buddhist cosmological, or at least a Tibetan Buddhist cosmological perspective, you're always in a transition. You're always moving through one intermediate state to the next. And I think that in and of itself is a very kind of big realization. Yeah, it's a something like this, okay? That's like you see, look in the space. The space is only one. But in just think about this green planet, everywhere is different weather. You mm -hmm. see, 
there's just same space, but there's a different weather. Somewhere in the tornado, somewhere it's storms, somewhere very cold, somewhere very hot, somewhere a uh, lot of raining, somewhere so flat. So all these things going on, right? The exactly same. It's like electricity. You see, electricity is there's different many light bulbs, different shapes. Uh, these uh, chandeliers to a uh, weird looking the light bulbs, but the, the electrical energy is the same. The, the sub nature, the awakening seeds is same as uh, you and me, Mori, we all connected, but the difference is the karma because uh, some people mind is just enjoying and accepting. Some people like uh, a hungry and just wants they are more, but they want more. Mm -hmm. Some people different ways, but when you really reach the the lower, then you you can I can read your mind, Maury's mind, and anywhere in the world, there's no distance. The distance is, uh, but that way we talk about that is a little bit hard to understand. Yeah. The, through the mind, is, there's no. No distance. The distance is a delusion. Yeah. So that's a Buddha told. But you see, in today's technology, you can just sort of oh, Asia and everybody's sleeping right now. But you can talk to them. You can see them through the technology that really explains. You see, mm -hmm. and the Buddha talk about everything is not really empty of light, but then. That time, so people have doubts and these things. But today, so the uh, the X rays and things. Oh, you have some problems in your liver. Oh, okay, you the. Oh, you have some things in your intestine. Oh, you have something in your stomach. You can see through of your body. You see. Mm. Uh, so there's a, these subject we can talk about days. Yeah. Uh, so, but that's why it's we need the training. And we just like you know a one hour conversation can we can <laughs> go get rich any we can yeah. reach anywhere, but just uh, giving you ideas about the yeah. uh, the magic of this connection. You just say all oh, the trees same no all the trees look the energetically same. They have all have electricity energy, also they have life force too, but all different different shapes different colors different style. The kind of karmic of the the tree, karmic of the people, karmic of that everybody's just so you can see if the cats as dogs like in America the cats as dogs as like the kings or queens the yeah. people take care of them, feed them organic Definitely. things you see mm -hmm. in China they may be boiling thrown in boiling water yeah. <laughs> or just eat it. So you see karma difference. That's I'm yes. talking about karma difference. So I, I think I see what you're saying in that our it's really our perspective and the quality of our consciousness that's changing, and we're it's not really an ontologically different realm. It's just the mind's own prism is being altered by its karma, and therefore that's altering your experience is is that right or am i going too far by saying that they're not actually different yeah, realms in here there's a different way we can talk about it. for example okay then the story in ancient times there's a astrological person told the king of in india there's a one king he said oh next uh, few days there's a storm coming but anybody's going to drink the water they're high, they're going to have different different concepts, different way they're going to see. Then king covered his well. So hmm. make sure not get the water inside the well. And then the few days later, week later, and the king have had time with the whole country because everybody don't understand him because he's so different. Because everybody drinking the water, they have the their minds different and they see okay. different way, they think different ways. So then King have to drink the same water and then everything work out nicely. Hmm. 
That's an interesting mythological story. It it almost reminds me of some of the Greek stories, like, um, like if you eat, like if you eat the food of the underworld, now you're part of the underworld. Or if you eat the food of the earth, now you're a part of the earth. So like, yeah, that's not, a food. yeah, yeah. That's why shamans gives you these little herbs to mm -hmm. connect with the spirit world. It's not yes. something. But then people are addicted to it. They take it different ways and so on and so forth. You see. Yeah, I'm I'm very curious about that specifically because that that's been part of my exploratory path too. You know, I've I've worked with shamans here and there. I've had visionary experiences here and there. And one of the things I was curious about, especially now after we've gone down this road about how it's really more about a perspective of consciousness shift than it is about different actual realms if I'm if I'm correct about that, is it possible to through meditation, through dreaming, through visionary experiences, actually experience what we would call the 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 post death bardo or the luminous bardo. Are these things you can experience in this life, or are they things that only happen at the prescribed time of dying, being reborn, etc.? Uh, yes, of course. That's as uh, you see, uh, I know like a few people in Tibet, uh, especially this lady. She was uh, uh, in uh, like a, went to the coma like a few weeks mm. and she went to many spirit realms and uh, different uh, realms and different places. She when to wake up. She had all stories and so many uh, messages comes wow. within because uh, her mind uh, is kind of deft. But also you are uh, in the high, when you are reaching enlightenment or reaching high level meditators, they can, through the meditation, uh, it's, uh, there's no distance. You see, what I'm saying is uh, through the meditation, you can just uh, can go there, you can do yeah. things. Hmm. So I have many uh, true stories of that too. So it's just uh, today I just don't want to take too much time. But uh, uh, yes, uh, they can do that. Very interesting. Very interesting. I'm curious too. So this this I mean, like like to your point, in in one hour, there's there's no way we can cover all of these things. There's no way we can have a proper discussion about topics like consciousness, topics like death. But I really think from, from my humble perspective, this idea that I mentioned before about kind of slowly changing the quality of what you are desiring and how that reflects back on your own mind eventually, the thing for me that has been the most powerful for that is probably metta meditation and actually shifting you from out of a way of thinking that is self-centered, is egotistical, is thinking about how things affect you to completely shifting your mind to, to other people, to the rest of the world, and just essentially wishing them well. And I was, I was also very interested when I read in the book that, um, I forget the exact terminology you use. It's, it's the four, the, the prayer of the four, um, immeasurables. Immeasurables. Yeah. And, and I, I was like, oh, this is meta meditation. This is exactly the same as meta meditation. Could could you explain um, what the four immeasurables are and how that kind of helps change the quality of the mind and is is interrelated to really really everything, even even death and the quality of your death experience from from my reading of it at least. Uh, yes. Uh, first, uh, it's a really begins. So we always think about all oh, me, me, my family, yeah. me, so on, so on, so on. We have to begin to all, oh, and uh, others has a family too. Uh, in this world, it doesn't matter the color of the skin, doesn't matter which religion they follow, which culture they follow, which country they belong. Everybody wants to happiness. Everybody wants to peace. So in that case, we see everybody as kind of, oh, okay. Then also same time, 
the from the sky created as a weather the nurture the earth then then we live in in this green planet is uh, all living beings in this world is uh, we are one family from father sky and the mother earth in scientifically is uh, we all should be there to help in things each other and uh, also scientifically we need to be here i'm not sure we are humans because uh, humans may be coming from another planet because we don't know how to live this world but <laughs> so yeah. I, I feel that way sometimes too yeah. yes and that's the reason is also we are one family you see and then also you want peace love happiness success everyone want that nobody wants suffering nobody want hatred so dark case first we have to be really important to working with the economity there's no family to grasp in our army to hate so love everyone you see the i this uh, mother Te- mother teresa she says uh, we are humans is a selfish and a subsender but love them anyway mm-hmm. in all the living beings in their way selfish and subsidiary even though ants they have militaries the ants has a uh, uh, queens the ants has all uh, workers but uh, we have to love them anyway it's equally we have to drop to the hatred towards to a jealous towards to all equally love them so and then also kind of love everyone really just sort of all human beings even though plants we love just sort of they are beautiful in their life and you can talk to them you can nurture them then it's like your child so you know what time you have to water them mm-hmm. what's kind of light they need and what's kind of breed they need so when you care in this love and then you realize in everyone wants happiness and peace but what they thinking what they doing is only brings more suffering yeah because like it's just one word this wantingness the root of the suffering you see they want something they want one thing then they got they know another thing one another thing they want to make a home in the mars you see <laughs> yeah right. there's never a, never end that then you see then you have this compassion for them like sort of the one the mother has a child the child is a trouble then mother loves more the mother didn't give up so oh okay my child is don't listen my child is too much i don't i give up no mother's like okay i need psychology how I'm going to have i would have to prepare more love you see that is is called the unconditional love in compassion then also we have to drop jealousy and hatred only anybody doing something good we have to joy happy for them i'm so happy these rich people i'm so happy these people doing good things i'm so happy these people happy i'm so happy there's good people in this world i'm watching the news only i see the the murdering and the shootings but uh, Oh, there's so many when I realize there's so many good things and yeah. I'm so happy and cherish this goodness you see joy for everyone you see uh in the uh, the um uh, economy uh and uh, the immeasurable economy immeasurable love immeasurable compassion immeasurable joy in those is the immeasurable uh four things the, when you Well, when you accomplish that in the within your life then you are the compassion and the bain in the sanskrit terms say that is the bodhicitta mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. then you can start with the others put the first dagli janchi is like a, then there's also tonglin meditations there's so many ways we can talk about but that's just something simple way it's mm-hmm. like something like that yeah Michael, so you're a very practical guy and you want to know 
gee, when I do this medita meta meditation, it works. I feel better. So, and you want to know what's going on in the black box. Of course, so, always, always, yeah, always want to know what's going on in the black and box. That's good. And that's bad. We both know that. Mm -hmm. so, you know, it's good to be curious, but we don't want to be judgmental and start labeling stuff. So what's really happening here is it gets down to what we were talking about earlier with selfish versus selfless. Yeah. So when you are thinking and hoping that, so, let's say you start with your loved ones, your family, that's easy. Mm -hmm. I hope my wife is happy. I hope my son, my child, my cousin, my aunt, I hope they're happy. I hope they're free from suffering. That's easy, easy. I can do that. I hope, you know, people are rejoice in the well-being of others. And then, uh, and then may all beings live in peace. So equanimity. So th that's easy. And then as we, and, but we feel better because it's not about me. Yeah. It's about selflessness. And then you take the next step. The next step is, oh, the person I met at the supermarket, I hope she has a good day. I hope, and that's, and then you, and then you can, it doesn't happen in one meditation. It could. And then you can, people you don't know. And then you can go to people that irritate you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then you can go start talking about, uh, you know, maybe some politicians that you don't agree with or yeah. some leaders of the world. I hope that that person is free from suffering. I don't want to hurt them. I hope that maybe they're free from suffering. Maybe they'll start stop killing each other. So, so, and, and the Dalai Lama says, you know, if you're going to be selfish, he goes, be intelligently selfish. Help someone else. Because why help someone else? Because it makes you feel better. Why does it make you feel better? That's good karma. Because you're selfless. So that's the direction that we're going in. And, that, and that's, that's Rinpoche. You know, everything he does, I'm going to speak on his behalf, you know, has a motivation of helping reduce suffering. That's the mentality that we're trying to get into and away from, uh, okay, who's going to be on my next podcast? Are they going to increase my viewership? Um, will I have the right questions? How will I do? You know, it's like, eh, you know, you have to do some of that. Clearly, you can't just lie in bed all day and wish everyone well. But as you go through life and as you do that more meditation, meta meditation that you are doing, that you are doing then things soften. And you have more open mindedness, and that's where the joy and the happiness comes in. Yeah. Yes. Very true in my experience. And let me say, I have no problem sitting on the on the on the floor wishing everybody well. Hypothetically, it gets hard when when someone's being an asshole in real life, and you have to try to take that off of the mat. That's when it gets so challenging, and and that's one of those things that that's is the practice. Yes, that's yeah. practice. Weather's okay. Everything good is. Everybody's good practitioners. When mm -hmm. something pop, that's <laughs> you joy. Like thank you. Now time to practice. Exactly. So you know, Michael, I think in this book, I'm pretty sure we did that. We do. You know, it's it's easy. You're sitting on the cushion. I shouldn't say it's easy. You're sitting on the cushion. You're meditating, and oh, I had a good meditation today. Or, I had a bad meditation. Whatever. But what happens when the rubber hits the road? Right. And someone's irritated or you're irritated or they didn't do it exactly the way I thought they were going to do it, the way I wanted them to do it. And then uh, that's where, yeah, that's where the practice comes in. And there's tools to do that because, you know, let's face it. I don't know how old you are, but, you know, 30, 40 years, 50 years, you know, I'm 65. Uh, you know, we have a lot of years of, uh, of this habits that we've developed and it's not going to go away with a 10 minute meditation on the cushion. It's no. not going to happen, but it can go away with 20 minute, 30 minute. And then all these tools and practices that we have to retrain the mind during the day, as well as at night when you go to sleep. I don't want to get into that, but yeah, it is a practice and it's 24 mm seven. -hmm. And earlier you mentioned about the Bardo, everything's a Bardo. Yeah, that's true. Everything's a Bardo. This is not like, Hey, when I die, boom, I'm good. Or when I'm reborn, I'm good. No, everything's a bardo. Or as uh, they said in uh, the movie Buckaroo, Buckaroo Banzai that preceded you, you know, wherever you go, there you are. Yeah. So you think yeah. like, oh, okay, um, I'm good. Mm, well, no, you still have your mind. That's That just goes with you wherever you go. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and like, for example, um, somebody asked me, Russian president Putin, and uh, somebody says, Ask me, said, how do you think? I said, I love him. 
and uh, the person kind of marries. You love him, Sama. You know what he's doing with blah blah blah. And I said, yes, I'm doing that thing. That's why I love him, because he's lost. If I'm angry, I'm kind of can't view what he's doing. I don't want to do that. I send love and send prayers. You see, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's the way you have to we work. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, I love that. I love that. Lama and I talk a lot about politics, probably, probably a little too much um, because I'm trying to understand Lama's mindset. But yeah, we don't like, of course, what Vladimir Putin is doing. Horrible. But him as an individual, he's obviously suffering. Yeah, he's uh, he's lost. That's he's an angry guy. He's not in a good place. Is he, talk about the realms. He's living in his own hell realm. Uh, we don't want to wish that on anyone. We just wish he would stop doing what he's doing. But as far as he is concerned as an individual, he's a lost person and he's in pain and suffering and he lives in his own hell. So we can have compassion for that. We don't agree what he's doing, but we can have compassion for that. It's not easy. But uh, but Rinpoche is better at that. <laughs> I I understand. I, I understand what you mean. I think, I think most people listening will too. I'm sure there'll be one or two who will take it personally, but that's how it always goes, right? That's and how it always goes. They can send you an email, Michael. If they have mm-hmm. an issue, they can send you an email directly. Okay. Yeah, just and and um, I I for I forget what my email is, but it's it's Morty Morty something at um, right. Uh, to, yeah. Do do you do you both have to wrap up, or can I ask you one more question? Or actually, maybe maybe this is a longer question. I'll I'll be honest. This could be I'm, a longer. I'm not, I'm not in a rush. I don't know, Lama, what you're speaking. I'm fine right now. It's fine. Okay, great, great. So you said you didn't want to get into dreams, but that that's one aspect of this that I'm supremely interested in because um, one of the I don't know di- disciplines, way of thinking, and thinkers who really inspires me personally is Carl Jung and other Jungian. Uh, psychologists and philosophers and dreaming really is a core part of their practice and i just happen to be reading a book right now it's an older book it's called the dream in the underworld by james hillman and as that might sound like he he draws a lot of mythological and psychological comparisons between dreaming and death and that's I don't think that's something we do a lot in the West contemporarily, but it comes up pretty directly, at least briefly in in this book that you you both have and that there there seems to be this um, relationship between dreams. And I, I don't know. I don't know about I don't want to like project and say that it's they're they're getting at the same core point here. But I, I thought that was an interesting comparison and that there might be some some overlap here in this this notion that there is something actually related between dreaming and dying. But I'll, I'll let the two of you um, tell me if I'm right or wrong on that one. So, so Michael, I'm going to address your question a little bit differently, which is right now our state of mind is you know I feel I feel pretty clear. Yeah. You feel good, et cetera, et cetera. Well, that means that five minutes from now, I'm probably going to feel pretty good too. If I was angry, then probably the next minute in my life, I'd probably feel angry as well. So everything that we experience right now as a result of our state of mind continues forward. Not only in the next moment, the next minute, the next hour, the next day, et cetera, until the moment that we die. The state of mind, so that's why it's good to practice now, because then you're likely to be in a pretty good state of mind when you die. Mm-hmm. And the state of mind that you have when you die will be the state of mind that you have going into the afterlife, because that's what goes forward is your karma, your consciousness. So if you go forward, if you die angry, then in your, and you're in the afterlife, you're going to be angry because your consciousness continues forward. That's, and then the same thing is when it's time to be reborn. You want to be reborn in an auspicious family, a good environment, a place where you can practice Buddhism and not in a place of war. Then, you know, you should be hopefully not an angry person, not have that angry habits, karma, habits. That's what 
continues forward. Now let's talk about the dream plane, which is what you were referring to earlier. So when you are dreaming, that is, uh, okay. So if we don't, if we can't control our state of mind during our waking state, because I'm angry, someone pissed me off, that they didn't do what I wanted to do, that mentality is what you have in the dream state. So if I watch a movie at night and it's a horror movie, which I don't like to do, then guess what? Those are the kinds of dreams I'm going to have in the dream state. And dreaming is very similar. I don't have my physical body. It's just my consciousness. It's a very similar experience to the bardo of the afterlife. So everything comes down to retraining the mind, retraining the mind so that we're in good states of mind. We're selfless, not selfish. We have compassion for others. And that follows through into the dream plane. And then if we can develop this practice called lucid dreaming so that we are aware that we are dreaming in the dream plane, that is very, very similar to being aware, conscious, having control of your state of mind as you go into the afterlife or the bardo. Mm -hmm, mm Mm-hmm. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. Yeah, that that's kind of where my head was at comparing comparing the two. And you know, to to talk about it again sort of mythopoetically, one of the things that I think is really interesting is that in the in the Greek tradition, uh hypnos and thanatos, um dreaming and death are twin brothers. So that that was another just really interesting connection I thought between the sort of the the connection between Tibetan dream yoga disciplining the mind so that you can maintain some sort of clarity and equanimity in the dreaming state. And then how that also maps on to perhaps the dying state. I I saw some really interesting parallels there. I thought, yeah, I teach uh, dream yoga. So Mm. I do retreat sometimes. Very interesting. How is that? I feel like that's probably a more advanced practice, but I'm sure a lot of people think that sounds interesting. Is there, is there a way to begin that process or does it all kind of start at the same level of honing the quality of your awareness, meditating, et cetera? Uh, just for everybody, of course, uh, if your veins uh, practitioner, they understand deeper, but uh, also somebody's uh, brain new, also benefit is to understand those dreams. Mm-hmm. Actually, is in the, in the terms of Buddha Dharma, we say everything is dreams. You mm-hmm. see, your past, it sends your child to that now is a dream. It's last night dream, and your past is no difference. And your future is dreaming. You see, and also dreams. And then just this person is the 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 continue which one continue dreams. So and therefore. The dreaming also trainings about the dreaming in the daytime and also dreaming in nighttime, both ways. That's a very interesting way we talk about it anyway. So my neighbor starts cleaning back up. So. <laughs> it's, it's no problem. It's not too bad. It's not too loud. Okay. Um, well, thank you both so much. This has been wonderful. I, I would love to wrap with you both all day long. I hope we get a chance to, to do it again someday. But congratulations on the book. I think this is a supremely interesting topic. It's one that I've I've been interested in for a long time. So um, I jumped at the chance to talk to you both and really, really enjoyed it. Um, and wish you both the best of luck with it. Thanks for having us, Michael. Thank, Thank you very much. And you. uh, you're a very uh, beautiful person. Oh, and, thank you. You uh, too. You too. You know, you can focus. You want to be the kind of best way. So that's nice. You know, you want change. The change comes within and within you. Feature also, you want to connect it. We have the website and also we have calendar and things. Sometimes I have different places. We do hold the retreats, uh, different teachings and subjects. Even though you wanted to come to us, you're welcome. So it seems like you're looking for something. And I'm not saying you come, but you know, it's a, it's in the Buddhist. It's a not up to me. It's up to you. But no, thank you. I I really appreciate that, and I will absolutely yeah. look at the website. Thank you so much. 
Nice meeting you. Thanks, Michael. You too.